Hey guys, what's up? It's Vibs here from Slide Nerd once again. In this video, I'm going to talk about how we can make our JSON code bulletproof. How do you handle errors in JSON? What to do if your JSON feed changes? What will happen if your app crashes? I'm going to talk about a lot of things in this video, but I would like to know first from your side, how do you write bulletproof JSON code? What kind of mechanism do you follow? Do you check everything? Do you validate everything? Let me know in the comments below as you see this video. A good programmer writes code that doesn't crash under good conditions, but a great programmer writes code that doesn't crash even under bad conditions. So if at this point I have my pre-lollipop device, which is this device here, and the lollipop device over here. Now if you go and start this activity which is called sliding tab layout by your menu here by saying sliding tab layout, there's a good chance that your app may crash and the error completely lies by saying that you have an error here in the drawable statement at the bottom indicating this drawable dot set bound statement inside the activity with sliding tab layout and the reason lies inside your vector underscore android dot xml if the auto attribute comes after the android attribute then your app is going to crash on pre lollipop devices but it will work on lollipop devices go back to our fragment box office class and go to the parse json response method Look at the amount of confidence I had while saying current movie dot get long. I was so confident that key ID will never be null or empty that I didn't bother checking whether it can actually give an error. But if the JSON feed gets messed up from the server end, your code is going to completely crash. And I'm going to show you a nice example of something which I was playing with. And here if you go to this method called test JSON objects inside our activity with sliding tab layout, I've simply called this method here inside my own create of that activity so going down what i've simply done is created this json in code you see this hello and there's a null inside double quotes and then there's a word key with a null without any double quotes and you're surely wondering why i did this because i want to show you something this null in the double quotes is different from this null without a double quote even though they both give you null value inside your string let me prove what i'm talking about here you see you see you say json object dot get string and you say hello what do you think is going to be the value let's print out and find out you go to sliding tab layout example here it says null here even though the value is enclosed in double quotes it is giving you a null now let's find out what the keyword has to say about it you put the keyword here and let's see the output same thing again go to the sliding tab layout example it says null here so whether it's in double quotes or whether it is without double quotes the value is giving you as null however let's test something else what if we simply want to check whether something is null or not we can simply say json object dot has now remember has is going to give you or tell you whether the key is present in the json feed or not it doesn't care about the value of the feed whether the value is null whether it's not null it doesn't bother but before I show you, there's one more method I haven't shown you in the previous video. And that is this method called isNull. Here, you simply pass the key. For example, say hello. Let's store this inside a Boolean variable. Let's check if the hello key is null or not by printing this Boolean variable. Go straight to the same place, sliding tab layout. It says false. Whoa. Take a look at that. Even though we had a null value being converted in code, which we saw just now, it still says false. And at the same time, if you go here and put word here, it should say true because this is an actual null that's contained in the JSON object. Now you go to the same place back and it says true to indicate that word actually contains a null. In other words, the idea I'm trying to present is if there is no double code and if there's a null value, it's going to give you a true. But if someone actually enclosed a null value inside a double code, the object value that you get after extracting the data is going to be null. But the method is null is going to return false. So we need to make sure that we take this into account when we are parsing our JSON feed. So far, so good. But let's try our next, next little experiment. And that is to put a key here that doesn't exist in the feed and see how is null responds. So here if I put data here and what's going to happen? What do you think? Going to the same step, to the sliding tab layout example, it says true here return true for this key to indicate that the value of the key was null it wasn't bothered with the fact whether the key is present or not however if i use the has method over here to check if the key exists or not let's find out what happens 
the same step start the activity again it says false here in other words the hash method told us that the key doesn't exist so from this what i believe is there are certain cases or several cases that we need to combine together and handle so that our json processing is effective here's a list of what could go wrong while you're parsing json first case when one or more keys are missing even if a single key is missing a json exception is going to arise as we saw second case that we need to worry about is what happens when a key has null value like we discussed the hash method will simply tell you if the key is present or not it doesn't care about the value on the other hand the is null method will simply tell you if the key has null value or not it doesn't care about whether the key exists or not on the other hand a double quote accidental null value will still be undetected by the is null method so we got to make sure that we combine both the hash method and the is null method to check whether the key is perfect and we can process it and at the same time just to ensure that we handle this accidental null stuff which is basically a bug i think before we try to access the values that we already parsed and stored inside our model objects we perform an extra null check to ensure that this case has been handled as well now remember most developers are smart and the people who are making json apis are obviously going to take care of this but then somewhere some person can definitely mess this up and hence the precaution so going to the next step how do we handle all the scenarios so how am i going to handle all these things together now remember different people that is you and me may have different ways of handling the same thing i would like to know your opinion but here is what i'm going to do in code first i'm going to give default values to all the keys outside the try catch block but inside the for loop then if a key is not found i know very well that json exception is going to be thrown at the same time i'll use a combination of has and is now to check whether the key exists and then take its value i will also add a double check finally before adding data to our model object to ensure that a null value enclosed in double quotes doesn't skip that case so the question we ask or i ask or you ask in this case in our app is one thing what values do we actually need what is compulsory is the user okay without seeing an image yes under slow loading conditions it's quite possible that an image doesn't get loaded what about the release date it may not be available what about the rating it may not be available again but what about the title the title is needed you don't want the user seeing a not available in place of the title the user is going to uninstall your app straight away if that's the case so the way we are going to add movie objects to our list of movie objects is by checking whether the title is not now the title is not empty either so let's get back to code and fix all this in our json parsing coming to our parse json response method inside fragment box office let's create default values for all the fields that we are storing for a given movie so here inside the for loop we are going to need default values again and again if we initialize here rather outside the for loop here we can assign all the default values like long id as zero and there's title which can be given as not available you can say that so inside the extras package i have made an interface called constants here i have a string value called na indicating not available going back here i have that same value assigned inside the title by saying constants.na notice we are getting errors here at the bottom saying id is already defined we can remove this and of course we can remove the string declaration from here as well going down further we see that we have a release date which again needs a default value we can assign that here as well so we don't need an else clause here anymore with this if condition we remove that so we can give the audience score a default value as well and again we won't need an else condition if there is one and we can remove this statement and we can store the audience score the synopsis again needs a default value and last but not the least our url thumbnail needs a default value as well in the next step of our validation we are going to check whether each key exists and it's not null. the way we do that is write an if condition around the place where we extract the value of that key and we can simply say current movie dot has here we pass the name of the key that's going to be id in our case for the first key and we also use the not null check here by saying and and not is null and that can be again said by saying current movie dot is null here and we can pass the key id over here so this way we have ensured that we retrieve the value of the current movie only if that key is present and it's not null if the key is not present or if the value is null it's not going to be retrieved and we are going to be left with the default value which we initialized at the top here 
Same way we can repeat the same thing for all the other keys that exist in our code. Inside parse JSON response in the for loop where we are extracting data, I have added if con conditions everywhere to ensure that we properly handle the different scenarios. All we need to take care of now is decide when to add a movie to the list of movies that we want to capture. So we gotta check the condition whether the ID is not minus one and the title is not equals to NA. At the top, if you notice, I have given the ID value purposely as minus one. If we don't extract an ID, then it's gonna be minus one by default. Same for the title. We need the ID because when the user clicks on one of the results in that movie list, it's gonna pop up details about that movie and for that we need the ID. The user is going to be extremely pissed off if you simply have a title which shows NA on the screen. And hence we have the condition here where we add the movies based on that. Again, I have changed the number of results I'm trying to fetch and in fact now it's 30 here. So at this point if I run the app on both my pre-lollipop and lollipop devices, let's take a look at what happens. So here's my second tab. And if you go there, there's our 29 movies. As you can see, the images are currently loading here. But now when I go to the top, nothing is getting loaded. They are all being loaded from our cache here. The same happens to Lollipop here. Initially, the images load, but all 30 images are being cached. And it all comes to the size of our cache and how we are using it. I believe that the size of our cache declared inside the Wally single ton class takes a good amount of memory. And since the images are pretty small, which is 54 by 80, there are many images that are being stored. Now I'm not sure exactly how many images this is able to cache because the maximum number of results that I'm getting from this feed is 29. However, when we go to the search feed here, the search feed has pagination where we'll be able to load more results. And that is the point when we'll come to know exactly how efficient our cache really is. There's one more thing that I would like to fix inside our parse.json response method. And that would be the release date. If you go here, you notice that we extract it as a string. If you go down further in that method, you notice that we format it to give us a date object. Now here, we can have an error and that can be thrown as a parse exception in this case. Now the problem with this approach is, if there actually is an error, then the movie further processing, like adding it to the list of movies, won't take place. In our app, dates are not that compulsory. We are okay with the fact that we don't have a release date available for a particular movie. So, I simply added a try catch statement right here. If there is an exception, then our date object is going to be null. Otherwise, it will have a valid value. And inside our adapter where we have filled the data, in the own bind view holder method, all we got to do is check whether something is null or not and then set the appropriate value. Otherwise, set the default values. I'm making some changes to the on bind view holder method as well. Here I have two objects as you know, there's a holder and there's a position. Earlier, I had the image loading code inside this. Rather now, I have simply made another method called load images. It takes the URL and the holder object. Here it simply checks whether the URL thumbnail is equals to constants.na. If you remember in our fragment box office in the parse JSON method, by default, we had given a value of constants.na to our URL thumbnail if the processing of the URL fails. So if that's not the URL that we want to load, then we use our image loader from Wally Singleton and get the thumbnail. And we set that thumbnail as well inside the onResponse method. If you go up, there are two more things that I need to fix. One of them would be the release date, which can be null, as you saw. And the other thing that we need to fix is a negative audience score and what to do in that case. So going back to the parse json response method, let's fix two more things. One of them would be the date. As you know very well, while parsing, if there is an exception, then date object is going to be null. So we are going to retrieve this inside our on bind view folder method, where we simply say current movie dot get release date. If the date object is null, then we are going to display a not available message. Otherwise, we are going to parse it in the right format and display that date. Let's add our if else condition here where we can simply say if movie release date not equals to null, then do something with it, else do something else with it. So if the date object is null, we simply set the constants.na to indicate that date is not available. Otherwise, we need to parse this to the same format which we got in our JSON feed. So at the top, inside our adapter box office, we create a date format object which we call a state formatter. This is going to format with this format here which is yyyymmdd so we simply go here inside our on bind view folder method and here we are going to simply say date formatter 
dot format and we are going to pass the date object which is movie release date in this case and this is going to give us a string here which we can simply call it as string formatted date so once we do this we are welcome to set our formatted date on the movie release date object here so we can take this about and instead of constant dot na we can simply put the formatted date inside the last thing to fix would be our audience score it can be either minus one or it can be some valid value so let's have any else condition and test for that first i'm gonna get the audience score inside an integer variable if the audience score is minus one i plan to fade out the rating bar and display a zero rating on it notice how i have set the rating at 0.0 f and the alpha to 0.5 which means it's gonna be only 50 percent visible so going down here in the else part if the audience score is not minus one then we can perform our division and then set the proper value so with that we have ensured that our audience score is pretty good to go and at this point we have validated almost everything everywhere in our json parsing now when you run the app you notice that on pre lollipop the text is not bold whereas it's bold on lollipop at the same time this rating bar is editable which is definitely not something you want so let's go and fix that we can go to our custom movie box office layout file where we have defined how a single item looks inside that we go all the way to our rating bar here we have this attribute which says is indicator equals to false it simply means that you can edit the rating bar if you set it to true you cannot edit the in rating bar and the rating bar will act as an indicator at the same time we have to change the style to make sure that it is smaller as well so we can go here and say rating bar dot small here and that takes care of that now let's run the app and find out how it looks Far better, wouldn't you agree? We still have to work with the text and make things better. And the question comes to your mind about changing the rating bar's colors, handling volley errors, network errors, and so on. So all these things are going to be covered in the upcoming videos. It's not over until it's over. In the meantime, if you like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to SlideNerd, and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.